Picture this, you've been on YouTube or the interwebs going down the rabbit hole on the latest big shiny adventure bikes, getting all excited that this could be the one finally bring home, only to hop on the manufacturer's websites and have your dreams crushed by the reality of how much these land canoes actually cost, leaving you in a puddle of your own teary despair. <laughs> But fear not intrepid viewers, what if I told you there were four underrated little adventure bikes that will get you out there in the dirt and touring in the twisties without you having to flip a coin to decide which of your vital organs you're gonna sell on the Silk Road. And stay tuned because later on, I'm gonna be throwing a bit of a curveball into the mix. So the first bike on my list is the brand new Suzuki V-Strom 250SX. This is a refresh and it's stacking up to be one of the most affordable adventure bikes on the market. Now you might say solid, how the hell is this underrated when it's been on the market for like three minutes? Well, let me tell you that this isn't getting the coverage that it really deserves. Now it doesn't have sexy power characteristics. It's a single cylinder, it makes 26 enthusiastic ponies at a high revving 9300 RPM and 22.2 Newton meters of torque also at a quite high 7300 rpm the other basic specs are a six speed gearbox it's 167 kilograms wet or 368 pounds which is quite light for the class it has a 12 liter tank or 3.17 gallons now that sounds a bit stingy for an adventure bike but suzuki claimed that this little fuel sipper will get you over 432 kilometers or 268 miles to that little tank that's very impressive so it's going to be great with fuel economy too importantly it has a 19 inch front and a 17 inch rear wheel which means it has some dirt capability straight out of the box it also has decent 205 millimeters of ground clearance or eight inches and has preload adjustable rear suspension the seat height is accommodating at 835 millimeters or 33 inches other real nice to haves at this very cheap price point is a usb charger adjustable screen and a rear rack how many big adventure bikes do i see sold still to this day without a rear rack and lastly i've got to say that this bike looks quite good and i think fits nicely into the styling of its bigger siblings and it may not be as capable as the 300 rally or have the performance of the 390 adventure from ktm but what it absolutely kills the competition on is value for money and i really haven't heard that narrative being sung very strongly so that's why this bike is in this video it's just stupidly affordable here in australia this little bike is four thousand dollars cheaper than the crf 300 rally if you can get your hands on one and that's really important distinction to make here because if you're at uni or you're really strapped for cash this might just get you the opportunity to not only get a bike but also afford all the gear that goes along with it because that costs a lot too and it's important to get the right gear this really is a great little gateway drug into the adventure bike world i have catfished the americans here though because apparently suzuki hasn't announced that they're sending this bike to america yet so you guys will have to wait but for the asian market australia we're getting it so big smiles there but america i've got you covered on the next one Bike number two on the list for those keeping count is the Kawasaki Versus X300. It's faded to the back of a lot of people's minds as the market has slowly flooded the small bore adventure scene. That doesn't mean that the little green Mini has lost any of the great features that made it such a talking point when it first hit the showroom floors. Here's the basic specs. This is a parallel twin making 40 horsepower at 11,500 RPM and 19.2 foot pound of torque at 10,000 RPM. Six speeds, which is is great for the highway riding 175 kilos wet or 386 pounds a 17 liter tank getting you 480 kilometers or 300 miles that is really impressive 180 millimeters of clearance which is 7.1 inches importantly we have spoke wheels with a 1917 wheel combo it's got an 815 millimeter seat height or 32.1 inches and are still pretty affordable at roughly nine thousand dollars aud right away or if in the us it's about six thousand dollars i've had the pleasure of riding the little versus 
horses and I was quite impressed with how much adventure bike you get for the money here. With a comfier seat and that big tank, this was genuinely a capable little adventure tourer with a decent amount of accessories on offer. I thought to myself, you could quite literally get this Versus that does almost everything a big GS does and still have money left over for one or two more bikes because more bikes equals more better. Start it up. The next bike on the list is the Royal Enfield Scram 411. Hang on, hang on solid. We're talking about adventure bike here and this sir is a scrambler. How dare you? Well, I do dare. Remember that curveball I told you about? Well, here it is and stick with me because I promise to make some sense. If you're looking at a Royal Enfield Himalayan, what if I told you there's a lighter, cheaper and better looking Himalayan on the market? And you would say that's absolutely ridiculous. And I would say, no, that's the Scram 411 which quite literally is a stripped down Royal Enfield Himalayan at its core with some scrambler niceties attached. Really, it is an adventure bike in scrambler clothing. Now, one of the benefits of being a stripped down bike, it means all the adventure crap that they bolted onto it is no longer there. So you saved quite a bit of weight on this bike. It's 185 kilograms wet. And for the US guys, the Scram weighs 407 pounds, which means it's a six kilogram saving over the Himalayan at 190. 91 kilograms, which you will notice as you drop the bike for the fourth time in the campground car park. I'm sure we've all been there, or at least I have. Now, one of the real wins about the Scram 411 as opposed to other scramblers on the market is that often they ditch the bigger tanks for a smaller, sleeker, nicer looking tank. That's not the case here. You maintain that 15 liter tank that comes on the Himalayan. So that means you get the world crushing 465 kilometers or 289 miles of range. And it also means the onlookers on your journey will have a 44% reduction in the nausea at the side of you because this Scram looks far better in my opinion. Now there's no beating around the bush. You will drop a tiny bit of off-road capability here because you do get a reduction of 10 millimeters in the travel of the suspension and you also lose the 21 inch front wheel for a 19 inch front. But the RE Himalayan was never a hardcore adventure bike so it's not a big deal. If you're a short rider too, this is a great option as well because the seat height is a bum scraping 795 millimeters or 31.3 inches. Now what sets this bike apart from others having ridden the Himalayan myself is that little motor. It's quite a gem. On paper, the 24 horsepower is CRF 250L territory. And at significantly more weight, that really isn't inspiring if you're looking at the spec sheet. But what it does do is make a lovely dollop of 32 newton meters of torque. And you find yourself wafting along on a nice little wave of torque, which keeps you ahead of traffic quite easily. And if I had to sum the bike up, it's a lovely little back roads bike it's just got this tractor factor to it that makes it so endearing it's quite an enjoyable little bike to ride which goes to show that the spec sheet never tells a full story i suggest you check out fortnite's fantastic video on the scram 411 that they did recently that little motor will surprise you as long as you don't expect too much of it The last bike on the list is the Honda CB500X. Now, a few of you are gonna be like, hang on, Solid, this isn't underrated. Everyone knows these are fantastic. But despite this being quite a popular bike, I still think the 500X is actually underrated. And that's due in large part because a lot of people haven't actually ridden them and don't actually know just how capable they are. And okay, it won't be as powerful or as capable as the Africa Twin, but it truly gets you 90% of the way there towards the Africa Twin at half the cost of the Africa Twin. Now, I know that's a bold claim and it might ruffle a few feathers, but I've ridden both of these bikes and that's my opinion. I suggest you do the same before flaming me in the comments. This bike truly is an underrated little adventure bike. So it's a 471cc parallel twin making 47 horsepower and 43 newton meters of torque, which gives it an advantage out on the open road when compared to the smaller bikes on this list. Of course, it's got the six-speed gearbox as most modern bikes 
bikes do for that comfortable highway riding. Like the others on the list, it has a 1917 wheel combo. Annoyingly, Honda has never seen fit to put spoke wheels on this thing, much to the confusion of adventure riders everywhere. Seat height is a reasonable 830 millimeters or 32.7 inches with 180 millimeters or seven inches of ground clearance. Wet weight is a bit on the porky side for a smaller bike at 199 kilos, but you gotta look at it this way. It might be a deficit if you're doing hardcore off-road riding, but that's not what this bike is about. It's going to be an advantage because a lot of your riding is gonna be on the highway where this is gonna offer you greater stability. And let's not forget the range crushing 17 and a half liter tank or 4.6 gallons. That gets you 500 kilometers or 305 miles to a tank, which means more time riding the trails and touring the country and less time sitting around at the gas station, filling up, having to listen to Jimmy, the local meth head, scream at you about how his Ninja Zaki R1 with 3000 horsepower is way better than the bike you're on. And that if you had bought the same bike as him, maybe aliens wouldn't have laid eggs in his head. Tangents aside, having ridden the CB500X, I think of the bikes I've listed here, this is the one to get if you must have that big bike feeling, but you don't have the big bike wallet. If it not been for poor dealership service, I genuinely would have bought a CB500X over the BMW GS that I bought instead, because I was genuinely blown away by how much bike you get for the money here, and the power is enough to keep you happy. Yes, you won't be doing wheelies into the sunset, but you got more than enough to pull away or haul your luggage on a big adventure trip, and that's what it's all about. But that's enough of me gas bagging. I'd love to know what bikes you think deserve more love. So chuck your thoughts down below. And as always, don't forget to stay shiny side up.